looking for a podcast to help you transform your physical and mental, one that'll shoot you straight between the eyes with truth and no BS, helping you have the right mindset to accomplish things, the iron will and fortitude to follow through with what you say you're going to do. No excuses. Mark owns martial arts schools, and after 30 years, he has some real insight for real talk, real life, real conversations, motivational, fitness, self-defense, weight loss, live from the Great 1-8. This is Real Talk with Mark Cox. All righty, righty. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Happy New Year's Eve day. Tonight is the night. So I wanted to do a podcast, guys. Welcome to the podcast, Beyond the Mat. And I'm your host, Mark Cox. If you haven't met me before, welcome. And I wanted to do a just a live today of myself one more time. And we wrap up this year, this 2023 year. And I'm sure just like everybody else, everybody has their ups and downs. They have their, their uh, smiles and cries that happened throughout the year, stuff that made you smile, stuff that made you cry. And, uh, the, oh, Carson is already on this morning. Good morning, Carson. 9 o'clock, 9, 10, 11, 12. It's noon out there for you. Hope you're feeling better, by the way. If you guys all know Carson out there, we heard he broke his foot. And, you know, that's, that's just kind of life, right? We, we <laughs> That's probably one of those things that are one of those cries that we talk about instead of the smiles. And so with that being said, guys, we have a new year coming up. As always, everybody kind of gets excited and they're kind of trying to put the 2023 back, get ready for the 2024. What is it going to bring to us now? And what is the new year? So this past month, just for me, just so you guys know, I have worked on uh, another book. I've got two in the workings, but this one's going to come out relatively quick. Maybe I'll ask you guys on your chat a little bit. I'm looking at some different covers for it, but it's called The Essence of Purpose, right? The Essence and the Impact of Purpose and what it does. It's a small book. It's not a, it's not a, it's not a large read. And I'm, I'm talking about maybe uh, 30 pages most. It's going to be an easy read. As a matter of fact, you know, I'll probably give a lot of it away just so you guys have this. And I decided to do it on purpose because where else can we go ahead and uh, you know, talk about what our new year is and what kind of purpose we have in the new year. So the essence of purpose, when I decided to write it, I was just, I was looking at myself uh, when I did it, right? And I've always asked myself when I was a younger man, I don't know if you guys know my backstory. When I was a younger guy, I definitely felt no purpose, to be honest with you. You know, I was already working You know, I look back on what I was, right? On my 18th birthday, my parents gave me keys to my apartment. That was my birthday gift. And I said, um, all of a sudden, I was on my own. I'm 18 years old. My folks said, hey, you're not doing college road. Hey, we're going to help you out. We're going to get your first month. And they got me a key. And I was working full time at the time. And and my life was started to, to go. So on my 18th birthday, I got an apartment. In Reseda, yes, at the original Karate Kid, at the Reseda. And in a junior one-bedroom apartment, I remember it. I remember being there the first night even. and go, wow, this is it. I'm, I'm it. I'm on my own. It is what it is. And then I and I was working. I was a machinist at that time, guys. I tried college. College wasn't really my, my gig. I didn't really enjoy it that much. So I was a machinist, and that's what I did for a living. I did you know, production machining. I did grinding. I did lathe work, mill work, all that kind of stuff. And I always felt in there, even though I was, you know, I was contributing and I was making a living and doing what I did, but I never really felt purpose per se. And then in, then martial arts came around, right? In, in the, in the early eighties, martial arts came around and I started feeling purpose and I'm feeling like, wow, I think that's something I want to do. This is something I want to do. And how do I get started in this? And then my brother is the one that actually got me started. 
And when I first took a class, I knew that I was hooked. I was hooked for it, man. I was ready to rock and roll. And I wanted to get out there. I wanted to get after it. And I decided very early on, blue belt level, that, hey, I want to have a martial arts school of my own one day. And as the years go by, you know, my, my instructor used to talk about work stops, right? You work, you work, you work, you have a work stop and you get a new rank. You work, you work, you work, you get a work stop, you get a new rank. And so I said, well, that's pretty, pretty awesome. And then at blue belt level, I knew this is what I wanted to do. 1987, it's June of 1987, I believe. June or August of 87 is when I got my black belt. And I started a ministry already at Rocky Peak Church with my brother and Mr. Ken Knight. And this is how my journey started. And I still, I, I didn't really have a, a thing to do with kids per se, but I said, you know what? Let me go ahead and, and let me go ahead and go ahead and try these kids out and see, see what it is. And I had no idea that I had a gift of teaching children. And then once it started, it was just, I just took that program over and I just, I just went with it and I just really enjoyed it. I, ha I had no more, I had so much joy in teaching the children that I, I couldn't see myself doing anything else. And my purpose started to evolve. And I knew then that at some point, how do I have my own school? How do I go from a ministry to a school? So the first two or three years that we were there, I was like, okay, I'm doing, you know, I'm, I'm growing the program. It's big. And I got to move down and I asked Mr. Ken Knight. And the reason I come about this, you guys, because we did this cleaning at the studio and I come across the letter of Ken Knight. You stated back in, I think in 1990 or something like that, when I went to him and asked, hey, can I, how do you feel if I want to open up a school? We can keep the ministry for those that can't afford it. But you, how do you feel about me moving on and trying to open up an actual business with it? And those that want to come can come. And those that want to stay at the ministry, they can stay up here. I'll still come up and help and do that. And I got his blessings of it right away. It wasn't even a thought process. It wasn't even a thought process. And I read the letter he wrote to me. I have it I have it plaqued. I had it plaqued. And I just came across it. I was like, wow, it just gave me a lot of memories because Mr. Knight's not with us anymore. So I was like, wow, this is really just giving me a lot of memories. And my purpose started. And my purpose was at first, I just had such a love for martial arts that this is what I wanted to do. I wanted to teach. I wanted to do all the stuff that you do. And afterwards, I decided that uh, once I opened, I was really, I was struggling, you know, six months in because I'm like, oh my gosh, I got to find a mentor. I got to find a coach. I got to find something. Somebody's got to help me out. And then Terry Brumley came along. And this is kind of the history. And the purpose is, st is starting to come. So there's a difference between you have the essence and the impact of purpose. And what can your purpose impact? So I want to just talk to you. I, I want to talk to you a little bit about your purpose. You know, sometimes you may not think you have the purpose you have, but you do. And the impact that one person can make on their pursuing their purpose can really expand out like a spider. And when you're in the middle of your purpose, you really don't understand the impact that you have on thousands of lives, thousands upon thousands of lives. So even, you know, even when I was a machinist, right, I was doing machining and I was doing stuff for uh, Boeing and different things, hydraulic motors, all, all kinds of stuff that was used. But I was just a guy that down there making it, even though we had purpose on that and, and we, we made other people's lives, you know, better by what we made. I just didn't feel that personal connection to it. And then the martial arts is what kind of brought that together. And so my purpose was to change lives. And now let me tell you something. I didn't hit it out of the park all the time, by the way. Okay. When I was a young man and I was a young guy and my, when I was teaching, I may not have been the best instructor. I, I felt I was a really good instructor, but maybe my tactics weren't as, as, as sound. I wasn't quite a dad yet. So I, I, you know, I didn't have quite the wisdom that I had in, you know, I poured myself into my work and maybe too much sometimes to be honest with you. So I really didn't have, you know, I didn't have a, I hit it out of the park all, all of a sudden, but how can this little studio, this little 1500 square foot school that I got on just by you know, God's hand that I got it. And how did this 1500 little school spider out to be where multiple schools have come out of my school, multiple students, 
have opened up their own schools and have have their purpose now and have changed thousands of lives. When you really sit back, when you really sit back and look at what you've done and you can pat yourself on the back a little bit and say, you know, good job, well done, and and be humble at what you've done, but still have a good self, a victory, a self-victory. You need to have self-victories. If you don't have self-victories, man, what is it worth? You got to sit back and say, man, I, I'm glad I grew this, man. I'm really glad I did this. And I've got some fantastic students that have some awesome schools out there, you know, and now I, I'm a, a peer to a lot of them. You know, I might be their mentor to help them, you know, go to the next level as far as how to instruct. But now when I get on the mat with them and, and stuff like that, they're grown men with their own families and, and grown women with their own families. And I'm out there getting after it with them. And I'm, I'm like, wow, it's, it's amazing how life just kind of transcends. And now, you know, we're on this equal playing field. And I believe that once you, once you understand that and you can say good job to yourself, you're going to see, you're going to see the impact that you have on others. Now let's see what Carson put out here before I lose my train of thought here. I said, I believe the purpose is forgotten over time. It's good to take the new year to focus it back in negative people, the crime uh, the crying portion of the year you were talking about, three, the burnout, and I think that's all there. You're 100% correct. So we have the essence of, of purpose and, and the impact of purpose, but you do have all these three negative things you talk about, Carson, right? We have uh, the negative people. I've told you this many, many times. Negative people, those that are doing better than you, that are, are better than what you're doing, are not really wasting their time talking about you. The ones that aren't doing as well, that's how they waste their time or they're passive aggressive on on what they comment on Facebook and stuff like that. When they're not doing well as you, that's when you see them uh, start coming after you and the negative talk. And, you know, it's got to be like uh, like, you know, water off your back. It, it is what it is. The Internet makes everybody kind of um, Superman. I can say what I want. I can do what I want. There's no repercussions. There's no one of these across your across your chops because no one to say it to your face. So you're you're right about that. The crying portion of the year you were talking about, for sure. There's a lot of crying throughout the year. You know, there's a lot of things. There's a lot of times that you sit back and go, "Why do I do this? Why do I do this?" Because not only the negative people on the outside popping you in. What about the negative on the inside? It is true that as martial artists. We, we, I don't know why we do this as, as, a, as people anyway. Why do we do this? Why do we always kind of focus in on what the negative is? I, I get so many positive feedbacks about my instructors, about our system, about everything we do, but we always kind of dial in on the negative. I don't know why we do that, but I just think as human nature, we're like, it just drives us crazy that we get in this one person that, that's not happy, and this is what we're going to, you know, we're going to focus all our time on, and it sucks. And so... I would maybe maybe encourage it for myself. I'm like, hey man, I'm gonna I'm gonna pause. You know, we're gonna focus on the positive. We're gonna we're gonna move forward this year, okay? And then of course burnout. Of course you're gonna have burnout. When you have passion, you're gonna have burnout. There's just no way around it. When when you everything that you do, when you live life and you doing things over and over and over again, burnout is gonna be part of the session. And that is when is that when motivation steps in, or is that when when discipline steps in? You see, discipline doesn't care about your mood. It doesn't care about your burnout. It only cares about get up off your ass and get out there and get, get going. That's what it worries about, right? Motivation kind of picks us up when somebody motivates us or we had a good class or something that motivates us to get to the next level. Discipline makes it happen when you don't want it to happen, right? I think Jocko says it best, right? Discipline equals freedom. And if you want freedom in your mind, you got to have some discipline in your in your in your soul and that's what you want to do to to have not that you're not going to have burnout we're going to have burnout but discipline has to fight burnout that's just the way it goes and i'm sure most of you martial artists agree with me and most of you guys that are listening on 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 here will agree with what i'm saying about that so the next thing you know when we're talking about these key points right purpose is uh it's a universal motivator and it's got transformative power right you know, let's let's talk about some examples of how purpose, historical achievements in sports, innovative breakthroughs in business, maybe successful missions in the military. These are all essence of purpose. 
right? But now you have to, you know, and that's, and we look at other people's purpose and we say, man, do we really have any purpose? Do we really have it? Let me tell you something. Purpose is your secret weapon to keep going and motivate you. Your purpose. Is your purpose bigger than the burnout? Is your purpose bigger than, than uh, the negative talk? Is your purpose bigger than all that stuff? And the answer is probably yes, it is. So with that being said, you've got to be the one that discovers what your purpose is. All right. What is your purpose? A lot of us here on here are martial artists, right? So our purpose is to change others' lives. Uh, Carson's on here. His purpose was was to build a, a community for special needs students to be able to do something that nobody ever lets them do. And then he's gotten people that said they never walk again that can walk. Then he has this essence of purpose of, of taking a, a, a special needs child who nobody else will do it with, right? And, and maybe their autism is so nonverbal and maybe there's some violence involved in it and you still push through it and you push through it and you're having a purpose and you're making a difference in this kid's life, something they'll never forget ever. How much is a secret weapon is your purpose to change others' directions in their life as an instructor, as a, as a military guy, as a cop, as a firefighter, as a teacher, as a husband, as a wife, as a student? It all has purpose. And when you find your purpose and you, and you go after it, you're going to change yourself and you're going to change those around, around you. So now with that, that comes with discovering what your purpose is. So, you know, maybe an athlete will discover their purpose during a crucial game that defines their career path. Maybe that's what an athlete, that's how they, that's how they do it. Maybe they discover their purpose during a critical game that they've done something in and it, it defines their whole career path. Like maybe Michael Jordan finding his love in the clutch moments. Is he not the best clutch player ever on the planet? He lives for it. I think Kobe Bryant did the same thing. They live for that. They live for the moments that everybody doesn't want to be in. They live for it. That's their purpose. And, you know, a business leader might realize their passion for innovations during crisis. Um, you know, you know, some innovators we think about, Elon Musk, uh, Steve Jobs, all these innovators that that did things out of a garage and started a whole a whole thing to change people's lives. You know, now we, we might argue at the point that some of the stuff they've changed may not be be the greatest thing, but whatever is not great, there's the other side of it that's just like, how do we live without it? And so that once again, that that that's their purpose. Their purpose was to do that. You know, I think maybe, maybe even in the military, maybe there's a pivotal moment in the military where, you know, their purpose was defined as a leader and they wanted to go up in ranks. Same thing with a police officer. Maybe there was an incident. Maybe there was an incident of, of, of getting crime off the street and that, and that projected them to SWAT to, to whatever else they do. Maybe it's the firefighter. Maybe it's the one that's saving lives and taking it, you know, taking lives uh, out, out of burning buildings and saving them and putting it and giving them purpose. I know that my nephew that passed away had a lot with that. That's why he was an EMT. I know a story about him and listen to his purpose, his Cody story. One of the men that he saved, he was doing CPR on in, in the, in the ambulance all the way to the hospital. When he got to the hospital, he would not leave this guy and they wanted to stop CPR and Cody would not stop. He kept going and going and going. And you know how we met him, met him at his funeral. When Cody died and he was at his funeral, that was one of the stories that, uh, one of these older guys comes and said, Hey, your, your nephew never stopped on me. He never stopped. Um, and I'm here today because of him. Others wanted to stop doing CPR. He did not. And you think Cody has some purpose? Is that not, is that not some purpose in your life? That projectory on what it, what it took to the next, to the next level. And then you have to honor your purpose. You have to honor your purpose, whatever that is. You have to put your goals ahead of your mood. I can't tell you that enough. You have to put your goals ahead of your mood. Because in our moods, sometimes we just don't feel like doing a lot of stuff. I'm telling you right now. 
just don't feel like doing it. And we just get burned out and we just, we sink. And then we need to have that friend or that, you know, you, I, I talked before about these, these five friends that you have and these, and he looks at you dead in the eye and says, Hey man, you need to stop with, with the negative talk to yourself and, and get and pull yourself up and let's, let's get moving. You need those friends. You need to have the real, the real talk when it comes time for it. Do you have those friends? If you don't seek them out guys, cause it's going to help you with your purpose. All right. Challenging challenge challenges in a purpose driven life. Let, let's let's talk about man, we can really talk about this, right? Honoring your purpose. Let's talk about athletes facing injuries yet staying motivated. Let's take a look at I have that in my in our own, right? We got my son Michael Cox. Right, right as is, is in pinnacle, uh, going through his jujitsu thing, he does a, a full contact stick fight, breaks a finger, and the same day that happened, John Viverka does it. The same, the the month before that, Ashley gets in an accident. All three of these guys, athletes, all three of them still here, still getting after it. Ashley here yesterday, even at jujitsu class, you can't take it, but she rolled herself in here with her brother out of town. Facing this adversity and facing it head on. And guess what she says? She goes, look at this. Look at how far I can get my hip up. Right. And uh, of course, we we cut up with them. And, and that's our way of, 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 of motivating, right? Get it higher. Come on. You can. But if we, when you look back at it, you see uh, John Viverka wrap up a ball in his hand. So he can do some one-handed, still do some jujitsu. Um, Michael. Working through his finger, uh, he had a surgery on his finger that he had to have also from this, working through his injuries. Is that not honoring your purpose? You know, how many people have weak minds that are just say, just put it down and just say, you know, I got to I got to move on to the next to next thing. Or what are they going to do? Are they going to to rise to their purpose? You got to rise to your purpose, whatever that is. And let me tell you something that the on when they honor their purpose, it made all of us rise to our purpose because when they're not here, when Ashley's not here, or when Michael was in surgery for a week, it had to take my staff, Dickie, all these other other ones that are Carl and all all of us had to rise up to the that occasion because somebody else, um, you know, succumbed to injuries. Maybe it's the same thing in your business when when someone has to leave when they leave. All of a sudden, that it's you're going to have to rise to your purpose. Remember that. Rise to your purpose. Be the be the one that make sure that your your goal outdoes your mood, and put yourself in check when you need to. Let's, so the other part. Let's talk about business leaders steering companies through economic downturns while keeping their vision alive. Did we not do we not see that all, all through COVID? Do we not see it again? All of a sudden, LA says, oh, we had a small tick up in, in this. So uh, mass mandates back up on now the mass mandates back up on on hospitals or doctor visits. Like what? Really? You know, what does that mean? Does that, that mean, you know, we've already fought through this, this whole thing. And how many uh, students uh, I have that own schools? I don't know any of our schools that fell apart under our organizations. None of them did. You know why? Because they honored their purpose. They went after it. They found ways. They didn't stop. They're motivated. They're highly motivated. You know, um, even when the severity of COVID tries to hit our business and our, our government is telling you can't go to work, you can't go to work, we found a way to figure it out. And then we rallied together. We talked on the phone. What's working for you? What's not working for you? I'm not going to let this, you know, be beat us. I'm going to honor my purpose. My purpose is to change lives. And did we not change lives during COVID even more? You know, any adversity is going to rise the cream to the top. The leaders will come to the top anytime there's adversity. Anytime. We're not just going to let, we're just not going to roll over and die. We're going to make it happen. We're going to figure out the ways to make it happen. We're going to get up and get after it. So I want to, you know, you know, military, well, let's take a look at military leaders and maintaining morale or, 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 or police officers, how to maintain morale and focus under extreme conditions. Can you imagine the conditions our soldiers are on and they have to do 
what they have to do to maintain their morale and focus or a cop when everywhere he goes, he's under attack. What does that look like? See, because I've seen things before I've been on it. I've been out on, on calls with my instructor, uh, Sergio, when we rolled up on somebody that just got stabbed in the neck. And you didn't, you don't see this on the, on the news where you've got a young black man with his, um, blood spurting out of his neck and then all of a sudden you have four or five different of us on the ground stuffed in wounds to this young man that got stabbed in the neck and because of the heroes of our cops that day and it was a multitude of cops it wasn't just a uh you know one guy there was four or five of these cops going after this young man and guess what we thought for sure he wasn't going to make it, but guess what? He did just because of those police officers. Did you hear that on the news? No, because it doesn't fit a narrative. Did they honor their purpose? Absolutely honored their purpose. They went after it. They got after it. Nothing else mattered at that moment, but the purpose to save that person's lives. That's what they do on a daily. Firefighters have the same type of stories. You know, it's not just police officers. I just happen to be in that world with them. They have a purpose. My brother has a purpose on when he has his Zoe. My brother's purpose is to end this tr child trafficking. Look at that. Look at what he does when he does it. Going in, busting people, still in his 50s, still going out there, getting after it, having purpose, bringing girls home, making them get off the street, maintaining this. And we have all kinds of women in our, our studio here that work in that Zoe that's there with these women. Some came out of trafficking. Do you think they're honoring their purpose? Of course, they're honoring their purpose. It's just this is what I'm talking about, guys. You have to have a purpose. And then you have to discover your purpose. It's a secret weapon. And then you have to honor that purpose and you have to keep getting after it. And these are just stories of, of people that in, in my circle that I know. You guys can probably give me 100 stories yourself of what, of what people have done. You know, what, what they're, this is just in my little world. This is the, this is the impact we have as a, just as a human race to get after it and to have a purpose and to get doing. So in 2024, I'm not a big guy in about resolutions, okay? i just not. I'm, you know. Matter of fact, I hate going to the gym in January and February. I'm so glad I have a home gym because it is so packed out and so irritating with all the cameras around and all this, uh, you know, look at me and, and all this and I'm lifting. It drives me absolutely crazy. I like it around in the middle of February. It kind of dies down because everybody can't last but a couple weeks of what this motivation is going to be. You want to know why? Because they have a, they have a resolution. So they do all this stuff up until us oh, so on New Year's Eve. Okay, I'm going to, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. Uh, and then on Saturday, and then all of a sudden, bam, life gets in the way. Their purpose gets interrupted and their discipline doesn't come through. And you got to have discipline. You have to have self-discipline, discipline over motivation, guys. You're motivated because it's a new year. You're motivated because of this. Get Stop with the motivations, man. Get after it. Get in with a self-discipline. Stop with what, what motivates you. I've said this many, many times. You have to have motivation. You have to have some wins in order to, to continue to go. But it is your losses and your setbacks that make you grow. Correct? You've got to have wins to make you keep go. But you got to have the losses and setbacks to make you grow. So make sure that you guys have understand this honoring of purpose. So this is my, this was my, this, this was a little book I just wrote, you know, about purpose. And I decided to do it right in the beginning of the year. It, it's an easy read. I'm just right now working on the cover. I've already had the barcode and stuff for it on, on what you have to do when you, when you load these. But if you're listening today and you want that and you want a book, I'll send it to you. If you listen to this today. So if you write in here, I'd like to have one in comments. I'll make sure you get a free one. Uh, uh, when it comes out, it should be out in the, in about two to three weeks. Okay. I'm just finishing up some, some last editing, and then I'm going to have somebody format it for me. And you're going to be able to kind of go through this, what this, you know, what these key points and stuff like is, you know what I mean? Uh, I'll, I'll tell you some of what I have in it, right? What drives you the essence of purpose? The power of purpose is another chapter. What is purpose? How does purpose help us discover your purpose? 
prepare yourself. Answer these questions. What can you learn from your answers? Dig deeper on your purpose. And conclusion, embrace a purpose-driven life. This is the small book I wrote. So there's just little 10 little chapters. It's not a big, it's not a big, easy read, but I think it'll be impactful for you, especially if you're if you're in in when you're sitting around is what what is my purpose? Because I know some people, you know, like, oh, Mr. Cox, you own schools, you own this, and you do this, and you have an organization, you have all these people that have schools and they have black belts of their own, and you built it. You guys look at the finished thing that I'm doing right now. You haven't looked at at the at the times that I was a machinist and I was cleaning pools and then doing to the teach class and going through all the all the heartache of owning a business uh, paying others before I get paid don't look at what people have at the end because where I'm at now has nothing to do that's this much this is my ending right here it's all this all this work coming together that makes it makes it so. I think some people look at you, uh, you, you know, what's um like motivational speakers, right? I hear a lot of people say, that. "I just want to be a motivational speaker." I just, you know, they just get on stage and they and they they just get on stage. Some of these guys, Les Brown, these guys have got uh, decades of life experience that they talk about that you get to learn from, but you you just want to look at the finished product. You have no idea the essence in the in their purpose and how they honored their purpose to get where they're at. When you honor your purpose, you will get where you're at. I promise you. I promise you. Maybe maybe that's whatever your whatever your purpose is that day. Maybe your purpose is to be a better dad. Maybe your purpose is to be a better husband, a wife. You know, maybe your purpose is is to elevate your your business. Maybe you're trying to be a better business person for your employees. So this is my, so I'll give you personal stuff. I know that as I look back in this new year, what, what is it, what it is I want, I want to try and be a better boss and, and have a, a different kind of take on how do I, how do I take the employees up to the next level? You know what I mean? I think Sergio said it best. He was talking about winning his world championships the other day and how much he remembers the moments. I remember those moments too. I remember winning world championships and your hand gets raised and you get this little, and for that split second, right? Maybe I'm in a magazine or two or whatever I was, but maybe for a split second or two, that, that feeling was, man, that was so awesome, man. That was something I really wanted. I really wanted that. But as Sergio says now, I don't care about the world championship as much as I care about making uh, my students uh, champions and maybe not champions on stage, but just champions in life, making them get after it, making things hard for them because the victory pat the victory that you get past that, it, it, you can't put a price tag on it. You can't put a price tag on it. You can find studios that do things easy or you can just get after it. I'm just telling you, this is just where I'm at, me personally. So I just wanted to bring that to you at the end of 2024 and talk about, um, you know, what it would be like if you honor your purpose a little bit more in 2024, right? Remember, a life imbued with purpose is far richer and more fulfilling than one without you know, purpose will bring this vibrancy to your root daily routines. It's whether you're an athlete, you're striving for excellence, maybe you're a business leader for innovations, maybe a military, a cop committed to service, you know, social worker, whatever. Now that you've embarked on this journey of discovery and have tools to honor your purpose, the path ahead is clear for you. The steps you take today will be in alignment with your purpose is the foundation for a meaningful, impactful future. Remember that, guys. Let me say that one more time. The steps you take today in alignment with your purpose will lay the foundation for a meaningful and impactful future for yourself and for the others that you're, you're serving. The quest for purpose is an ongoing one. It's filled with continual learning. It's filled with growth. And you have to adapt when you have it, right? So you, it's ongoing. It's ongoing. It's always learning. There's always growth and you have to adapt. Embrace each step of the journey with the same dedication and commitment you bring to your sport or your business or your, your career. 
or whatever it is, your family, whatever it is, are you ready to live a life defined by purpose? The journey begins now. That's when the journey begins. So I think it's just a better a message than just, you know, give us your resolutions going to be for 2024. And I'm going to try and lose a little weight. And I'm going to finally start Krav Maga. I'm finally going to get on the jujitsu mat. Man, shut up and just do it. Let's go. Stop, to, stop talking yourself out of what you can do. Just do it. You don't go into the gym to, to, you don't get in shape first to go to class. Okay. You don't get in shape at home, start losing weight, then go to the gym. It just doesn't work that way. And I know the gyms can be intimidating, whether it's a martial arts gym or whether it's a gym gym, right? A, 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 a 24 hour fitness, a gold's gym. And you go in there and maybe you're, maybe you're, you're, uh, you're heavy, you're fat and you, and you just have all this, maybe you're skinny and you can't even lift things hardly. And you get all these meatheads out here looking at you and, or, or saying things or talking about you Man, who gives a shit, just move, just let's go. Right. Put your headphones on. It's your world. Honor your purpose. And if that's your purpose to make yourself better, then do it. You know, it, it, that's just my, that's just my two cents. I I've, I've been exactly where you guys have been or how you felt. None of the stuff I talk about isn't nothing that I haven't in, in embarked on in my own life. All right. I think the last thing I want to talk to you guys about is when I said that purpose is an ongoing one. It's filled with this continual learning growth and adapting. And isn't that awesome? Because I learned this all the time on the jujitsu mat. It's an ever last, it's, it, you know, you either you learn, okay, or you're the, or you're the one giving lessons. One of the two is happening on the mat that day, right? You're either the hammer, you're the nail, or most of the time you're the board. And, and isn't it true on the jujitsu mat where we have to continually learn what, what works for me? What works for me may not work for the next person. So there's growth in that. And understanding that, hey, I'm going to stay in my lane. This is my lane. All right. This is, I guess for me personally, I can just tell you, you know, I've got some really athletic people here, right? They do these weird inverted stuff where they, they come up in a, you know, they, my son or Ash, whatever, they come up like a headstand and they turn around and boom, come down. Uh, you know, I ain't doing that. That ain't me. So I stay in my lane. But then all of a sudden somebody's, you know, maybe they're putting you in holes that you can't do and you're going to have to adapt on, on the fly right there. You have to embrace and then, and then I'm embracing each of these steps, right? To the journey. But man, I'm dedicated to it and I'm committed to it. Are you dedicated and committed? That's the real question. Do you have discipline over motivation? Use your motivation to get you started. Use your discipline to keep it going. Don't forget that. Use your motivation to get things started. Okay. But use the discipline to make it continue. I, I, that's how I like to, I think I'd like to end that with you guys today. It's only a 40 minute uh, gig today, but I just want to tell you guys, happy new year. Let's get after it together. Honor your purpose when we go after it. Listen, I, I want to tell everybody that my YouTube channel has been blowing up. All right. I've got, I've got somebody that's helping me with this now. Um, his name is Noor. And I am over a thousand subscribers now. So if you've not been on YouTube yet and you go to Beyond the Mat podcast, if you can go to my YouTube channel and just take a like there and we continue growing that together, I'd really appreciate it. Anytime you guys I'm live and you can share what I'm saying, I'd appreciate it. I'll have some more interviews coming up. Uh, I'm not sure why I, this is true, but I have a lot more. Um, I have a lot more engagement on my own sometimes than I do interviews. So that's why you've seen, I take December and I did most of them uh, on my own. I've got some more uh, interviews lined up. I enjoy interviews. I really do. Uh, if, if it's something you guys want to get on the show, you're welcome to DM me and, and get on the show. And I'll be glad to, to interview you and, and see what you see, what you'd like to do. Uh, and we can be a guest on my show for sure. 
Uh, I'm going to revisit some of the ones that I did before because there's a difference now a year, year or two later on, on what their life looks like. So if you would, you guys share when I'm on live. And for podcasters, guys, this is Ann, by the way. The great thing about martial arts is that it's an art. You take it, make it your own. My son adapts every time he's on the mat, and it's beautiful. Seem to get after, get at it. Oh, that's awesome. That's really good, Ann. Listen for podcasters. Just so you know, if you can go, if you listen now, listen. I have all audio for myself too. Markcox.com has all my audio content and the YouTube. So you're welcome to go look at the live that we do. On the same token, I have all my stuff transformed to audio. So I have an audio podcast, and that's markcox.com. So if you want to listen to it on Spotify, on Apple, on whatever platform you have, my podcast is on. To help us podcasters, guys, it is subscriptions that really do it. It's not as many downloads, but if you subscribe to it, it kind of moves us up charts. And so if you could do that for me, I'd really appreciate it. I hope you guys have a a safe uh, new year. Do me a favor. Let's not drink or drive. That's not something that needs to happen in today with Uber. I'm out there. My, I'm always never do anything on New Year's Eve, but my phone's always open if somebody needs me to pick them up. I can tell you that for a fact. Ashley Sage was hit by a drunk driver. Senseless, senseless, taking her out of, out of, out of, uh, thing, uh, out of um, battery for in the studio now for months. And she's on a road to recovery at the peak of her, her athleticism now have rods and, you know, screws in her, in her hips. And she's still going to be getting after it. She's still going to be a force to be contend with. And she's still here with us. And that's thankful. But once again, some uh, scumbag drunk driver that doesn't have to be uh, drinking. I have no, I have, I have no sympathy for drunk drivers. One also back in the early nineties killed one of my students on the way to the studio was killed by a drunk driver, Carlos Mata. I have no, I have no love loss for him. There's no reason for drinking and driving. Stay safe on this New Year's Eve. I want to thank all my listeners for Beyond the Mat podcast. Thank you for, uh, thank you for listening. Thank you for commenting. Thank you for uh, for help building the show. I really appreciate it. I really love doing this. I feel this is another purpose of mine is to get stuff out there because when I'm not here anymore and my great, great, great grandkids can come back and say, Hey, that was my great grandfather, man speaking. This is what he, this is what he believed back in the day. And so that's what I do this for. I love you guys. Happy new year. 2024 is tomorrow. We're going to get after it. Have an awesome day. You're born to win. You've been listening to real talk with Mark Cox. Real life, real topics, real conversation. We're passionate about motivation, fitness, self-defense, weight loss, and coming at it from a real angle. We hope you've gotten some useful and practical information from this show. And we hope you had fun. We know we did. We'll be back soon. But in the meantime, hit us up on Instagram and Facebook at MarkCox100. Make sure to subscribe and review. And tell a friend or two about the show. For more, hit up the website at markcox.com. Till next time, keep it real.